Greetings this morning. Thank you for tuning in to Notes for the Morning. Now, we want to carry on what we did in the last devotion. And that was, that was we had eight things that we wanted to examine just briefly. Seed thoughts to help the believer carry out his resolve that he made in the month of January to have his spiritual health checked and improve his spiritual health. The question is, how do I improve my spiritual health? And so we've been trying in the month of February to give you things that will aid you in improving your spiritual health. Well, we talked about the war three devotions ago, and now we are involved in the responsibility of the good soldier. Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 3, Thou therefore endure hardness, as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. And so there is a responsibility. Paul gives it in the general sense, we are not to be entangled in the affairs of this life. And so that indicates some things. We are to be a receiver of the Word of God. We're to be a doer of the Word of God. We are to be a God lover, and we are to be one that is diligent. I labeled it, be a presser. Press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Today, we want to see number five. We are to be a racer. In Hebrews 12, 1, The Bible reads, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. Listen carefully. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. What is that race? That race is the race of faithfulness. That is, are we going to be faithful to God. Are we going to live by faith? Are we going to walk by faith? Are we going to walk by sight? There are some requirements to the racer. He is to lay aside every sin and weight that does so easily beset him. And so he's got to be conscious of what's happening in his life, and he must run this race with patience. Briefly, that is to be under the authority of Jesus Christ. That is to rank himself under, to be humble, to receive the commands, to know how to run the race. Number six, he is to be a separator. Second Corinthians chapter six and verse 14, but be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness. Paul goes on with several things there, if you read that, and he comes up in verse 17, and he says, wherefore, on the basis of what I've said, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. So when we speak about being a separator, that is, we're to separate ourselves from this world. Paul said that we are not to be entangled with the affairs of this life. Why not? Because righteousness has no communion with unrighteousness. Light has no communion with darkness. And those in the kingdom of God have no agreement with the system of Belial or of the devil. So we need to come out from the thoughts and philosophies and of the world that seemingly is guiding many children of God today. Along with that, then, we are to walk in holiness. The Apostle Peter said, too, to those that were believers that he was writing to in throughout Pontus and Galatia and Cappadocia and Asia and other places, he said to them in lieu of the second coming of Christ, he said, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober and hope unto the end for the grace that will be brought to you in the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, here we go, not fastening yourselves according to the former lust 
in your ignorance. You see, we've been changed. The new man is not the old man. We're different now. We're a new creation. But as he has called you as holy, so be you holy in all manner of conversation or behavior. So we are to be holy people. And also he is speaking of not being a servant of unrighteousness any longer. And you can go to Romans 6 and read about that. But we are free from the dominion of sin. We no longer are servants of unrighteousness. But Paul said we are servants of righteousness. And our fruit is no longer the works of the flesh. But our fruit is unto holiness and the end everlasting life. So, to summarize today, we're talking about being a racer. We're talking about running the race. We are to be a separator. We are to come out from among them and be separate. Now, number seven, the section seven is be a mortifier. In Colossians chapter three and verse five, Paul wrote these words. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. We're to crucify the members, the flesh. And he speaks of them. Fornication uncleanness, inornate affection, evil concupiscence, covetousness, which is idolatry. And so we are to come out of them. We used to walk in them. He said, but now you also put off these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, fear the communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Paul makes his explanation clear. You see, we are not walking in the old man any longer. In Ephesians 4 and 20, he said, But you have not so learned Christ. If so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. So if you are a believer, we're to put off the old man, which is corrupt according to deceitful lust. We're to be renewed in the spirit of your mind and you're to put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Therefore, we are to be a mortar fire, a crucifier, crucifying the flesh every day. We deal with the old man every day as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Now, the last one is to be an endurer. In 1 Corinthians 15 and 58, Paul writes, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. 2 Timothy says, verse chapter 4, verse 7, Paul writes, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And so, child of God, believer in the Lord, These are eight areas that you need to be mindful of. And so we need to be enduring in the work of the Lord. So we can say like the Apostle Paul, I have fought a good fight. Are you fighting the good fight? I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Those things I want to be able to say as I leave this world and enter into the next world. I thank God that he's given me a desire and I pray he has given you the desire to look at these things and know our responsibility as good soldiers of Jesus Christ warring against the old man. We need to wake up. We are in a war and we know the winner of this war. The Lord Jesus has already entered within the veil. We know that our head has all power and all authority and all knowledge, for he is wisdom. We need to visit the throne of grace. We need to talk to God every day and get our orders and what we are to do. Father, I thank you for this time together. Bless your people. Encourage them today. Let them understand, God, all of us, that we are responsible soldiers of Jesus Christ. We are no longer being ruled by the old man, our sin. We are not dominated by the old man anymore. Yes, he is constantly trying to take back over the throne. But God, we have the victory 
because we are servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have all power and all knowledge in Christ. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.